right now we're at the uh, scooter platform. Um, the scooter platform has been on flow since 1996 and in uh, 2018 ceased production and since then we've been uh, decommissioning the platform. Pre-60's involvement in uh, scooter and catch assets is uh, to oversee the decommissioning. Um, they ceased production in 2018. Uh, in 2021 but we became duty holder of the two assets and have overseen the decommissioning since. Um, that in includes the P&A of both platforms uh, with a mobile jack-up unit and uh, since then uh, they went into lighthouse mode uh, which is kind of where we're at now, uh, cold suspension and um, we're now in the phase of uh, removing the two platforms and uh, the second one is, is schooner. The schooner has been removed by the TL uh, heavy lift barge. So the T-Alpha is a, a, a DP vessel, semi-submersible. It uh, comes alongside. Uh, it's got cranes with the capability to lift the top side and the jacket. At the moment, preparations are being made to lift the top side, and uh, already the, the rigging has been installed. Hopefully, in the next day or two, the, the top side will be lifted. As duty holder, we've still got legal responsibility for the asset and the safety of personnel on board. Uh, so we need to make sure that we've got enough appliances to evacuate people from the asset should there be an emergency situation. It is a hazardous task. Um, there's a lot going on in, in a very small place. There's a lot of heavy lifting gear. There's, there's you know, two of the largest cranes in the world in use. So you know, there's a lot of things you have to do to make sure people are safe. Um, there's the controller work, obviously plays a big part in that, but it, you know, it does come down to the individuals to look after themselves and look out for each other as well. Wildlife at Schooner, um, there's, it's actually become a habitat for various uh, seabirds. Uh, for this project, um, as a kitty wake in the UK is a protected species, we've actually had to apply for a disturbance license with the regulator. And in order to get that license, we've actually had to do a lot of deterrent work. Um, so we've actually had a vessel come offshore uh, with falcons, and uh, the falcons have flown around the schooner uh, basically to deter the kitty wakes from nesting on the structure. So when we turned up with the tea elf, we had minimal activity due to the work we'd done and the regulator was able to issue us with a disturbance license for the, the few that were remaining on board. Yeah, so in the last 24 hours we hit a key milestone for the uh, heavy lift campaign and for the decommissioning project for uh, Schooner and Ketch. Um, we successfully removed the top sides from the jackets um, and landed it onto the deck ready for sea fastening. Um, to be the last OAM or one of the last OAMs uh, is a little bit bittersweet um, for me. Um, I've been here two years um, mainly on the project but for a lot of the other guys uh, they've been here 12, 15 years, so they hold this, this platform holds a lot of good memories for them. They've spent half their working career here, so it's, um, yeah, it's sad to see it go. Overnight we uh, lifted the schooner topside, which you can see on deck behind me. Uh, that was lifted just after midnight last night. And we brought it to deck, uh, the hook load came in spot on at about 1,270 tonnes. 
Uh, now we've um, installed the rigging platform on top of the jacket and we're using that as access to uh, prepare and weld out the jacket lifting point. Uh, so we can't use the original pad eyes on the jacket um, because the, the original design was just for the weight of the jacket itself. But um, obviously over the years we've got marine growth um, in addition and also the, the added weight of the piles. Uh, and also on top of that we're going to have to do a bit of overpull in case of any suction on the seabed with the, with the mud mats. The way we're lifting the jacket we're not using the conventional pad eyes so we've actually put a trunnion um, configuration on top of the legs so it's like a cap that goes on top of the leg um, and the slings go around either side um, and they have to be angled in such a way uh, to ensure we have a good centre of gravity for the lift as well. We're currently at about 31 metres draft with the vessel and that's because the jacket top is about 10 or 11 metres above the sea level. Once the jacket is connected on the hook, we'll de-ballast up to a draft of around 16 metres for the crane suspended transport. There's been a number of challenges here, um, one of which is the, the, the tall nature of the jacket compared to the hook height available for the TL. So we've had to design the rigging very carefully and check, the, check all the clearances very carefully to ensure that we can lift it clear of the water for a safe transit into Rotterdam. Um, so yeah, the, the slings are now in place, uh, ready for the lift, and we're, we're just waiting on the uh, piles to be cut. Ongoing at the moment is dredging of the piles. Um, so when the piles are stamped into the seabed, um, they're grouted in uh, to the jacket structure. And uh, obviously now we need to cut the piles to enable us to remove the, uh, the jacket from the seabed. So um, initially the, uh, the dredging tool goes down into the, uh, the, the pile leg. Uh, once the dredging tool's inside, uh, obviously starts to pull up all the debris and, and soil and sand that's inside the pile and uh, we can also use the ROV to monitor the exhaust of the dredging tool and make sure we're getting uh, stuff out of the pile. The biggest challenge on this project has been the height of the jacket. Uh, we're here on board the SSCB T Alf and even though it's got very large cranes the, the height of this jacket is pushing the limits of the hook height that we have available. So even when the jacket is hoisted fully out of the water we have around five and a half metres clear below the jacket to the waterline. So for the crane suspended transport from the removal site here into Rotterdam, we'll hold the jacket above the water and sail in. Uh, once the top side and jacket are lifted and removed, the, the seabed will be more or less how it was before the platform was installed. There will be some small pipe sections left initially, but a separate contractor will come on later and remove all of those pipelines down to seabed level. So yeah, working alongside 360 Energy on this project, it's been very positive, very collaborative. We're working together with them as partners. I'd like to thank um, everyone involved in the project, right through from the Harrow guys to the client and, uh, and my colleagues from 360 as well. Everyone's worked really well together, collaborated well, a very one team approach, which is uh, you know, the best way to get these projects executed if everyone's you know, aiming for the same goals.